In this part of the lesson, we're going to use Ruby to read and write data from Cassandra using the previously created schema. To do this, we're first going to need to install the Cassandra gem for Ruby. Now the Cassandra gem we're going to use is the Cassandra gem developed at Twitter, and it uses the Thrift interface. The Thrift interface is a native wrapper, so we'll need to install some essential tools to compile that. Now that the build tools have been installed, let's install the Cassandra gem. With that, we're ready to start writing our Ruby code to insert data into Cassandra. We'll go back to that stack overflow data, and we'll parse information out of that to insert into the user tags column family that we previously created. Remember, the user tags column family looks like this. We have the user ID as the row key, a tag as a column name, and a value, which is how many times the user has commented on that tag. So, first we'll have to require Ruby gems and require Cassandra. Now we'll need a connection to the Cassandra system. In this case, we can just specify the local host. First, we want to specify the key space that we're going to be connecting to, which is somewhat like the database that we're going to be using and then the host and the port. By default, Cassandra runs on port 9160. So first, let's see if we can read the data out of Cassandra that we had previously written in. So we know we had a user named Paul that we had created. Let's see if we can read their information. That will get there their information. We want to pull the tag counts out of the row. I've already created some code that I'm going to copy and paste in here that will look at a row from Cassandra and pull out their tag counts. Let's take a look at that. So here we go through each pair where the pairs are the columns and the counts. You can see column, the tag count, and we pull it out of the array of pair. Now the tag name is the first part of the column. Here we say we've seen this tag and here's the tag count. All right, so using that method, we can output what tags Paul has commented on. There's the row that we previously fetched. And let's just take a look at those tags. OK, so let's go out and see if we can run this. All right, there we go. We see that Paul has commented on Cassandra twice, which was the data that we had actually written in. Now let's see if we can insert new data into the column family. We'll just put that here at the end. So db.add, user tags, I'm going to say the user is Todd, three on, say, Postgres, because he has bad taste in databases. So let's see if that runs. All right, that seemed to work, but we need to read it out now to make sure everything is there. So. Now notice we just added a value here. We didn't call insert or anything like that. That's because we're adding this, we're adding to a wide row. So it's a, the behavior is a little bit different than when you're working with a well-defined row. We'll get into an example later on in this lesson that's a more traditional type of row with defined columns. So 
the Cassandra gem has an easy way to pull out the IDs of everybody in the database. So we're going to do that. So we're going to get range, user tags, the batch size of, say, 1,000. Of course, we're not going to hit that limit because we only have a few records in. So what that's going to give us is the ID or the row keys for every row in the database. So here we'll have a row key of Paul and a row key of Todd that we expect to see. Then we can call a method to get all those rows at once. And when you don't know how many rows you're going to get, you probably wouldn't want to get all of these at once. But since we know we're getting only two, we'll just get them in one go. So let's iterate through those and output their values. All right. So. We execute the query and we loop through the various rows. We know we are getting the ID in the row, so the ID is actually the name, which was Paul or Todd, and then the row itself. We're going to pull the tags out using the method we had previously created, and we're going to output it so we can see what we're working with. And finally close it out, and let's see if it runs. All right, it looks good. So here was the first query for the individual user, and here was the query where we got all the users. Notice that Todd's at six now. That's because every time we're calling this script, we're adding three to his count value, so it just keeps getting incremented. That was the call to add. That's it for this lesson. In it, you've learned how to read data from Cassandra using the Ruby Cassandra library, and also how to write data into Cassandra using the Ruby Cassandra library. Next, we're going to learn how to write data into Cassandra from a Hadoop MapReduce job.